everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Kyra and I am here today by your vote to bring you a video of my favorite way to study and learn tarot. Uh, now this isn't this isn't gonna be a super long video, I don't think, but I ramble, so we'll see. I have a deck here to talk about and use in my examples, and I've got two of my journals to show you what it is I'm talking about. So let me go ahead and move things aside and we'll get started. So this is something I developed when I was restarting my tarot journey and I was trying to just kind of commit more to memory the understanding and meaning of the cards. Um, my favorite way to go about doing that is with daily draws and reflections. And this is something I used just learning tarot and also for studying decks. So if there's a deck I really want to get to know more, I will use this practice with it. And that's actually something I'm literally just starting to do now with my Cosmovisions Oracle Tarot. So the Cosmovisions is by James R. Eats, and it is it is a tarot deck, but it's the structure is reworked a bit. Um but to me, I still understand it. Look at that, and the pictures go panoramic. I still understand it as a tarot deck. I still look at it as a tarot deck. These are the majors. So you have the majors, um, but each one in the guidebook has a mirror card. Sorry about this uh, shifting, whoops. So under each card in the guidebook, it says what it is, and then it says the mirror card, including with in the majors. So even though it's reworked and the majors are where most of the reworking is, um, it still always tells you the mirror card and it still goes in, in the correct order. So you have, or in the basic order, so you have the major cards. This would be uh, the Emperor. This would be 10 is the Wheel of Fortune. The birds are swords. That's again a major. And then the other big change is this deck took the court cards from each suit and created the the suit of beings. So there's five suits. This one is, I believe, a water one. The entertainer. No, sorry, it's not a water one. It's the pentacles. Um, because they have certain... Uh, visual cues. So there's the entertainer, the swan, seven of embers, embers is wands, trees is pentacles. And so you can go through the whole deck. It is stunning. And I use this deck, um, if you haven't seen any of my videos where I talk about it, to connect, woo, sorry, I turned down the light accidentally. I use this deck to connect with my um, ancestors. I don't know why. It just, I just do. <laughs> um, the elementalist, so this is a sword court card. Um, so I want to learn this deck more. I want to learn A, the structure built into it, B, more ways I can work with it, like s still to connect with my ancestors, just more ways I can work with it. Best Hierophant card ever, the Phoenix. And see um, how I want to be able to tell what all the court cards are um, and what all of these. These ones are easier because it's like if I know what 11 is, then I can figure it out. Um, 11 is actually one of the ones I don't know offhand. Justice. I should know that one. My goodness. That's my freaking Libra card. Come on, Kyra. Anyways, this is um this is a swords one. I think this is the Queen of Swords. I've pulled this one a few times. Uh, 
I was correct. It is the Queen of Swords. Go me. So yeah, so we have, this is the Page of Swords. Um, I just learned that this is a Cups card. So we have, and this is the Fool. So this is the deck I'm working with currently. And what I ended up doing, I don't remember how I came to it, but what I ended up doing was determining that I would use my daily draw, which I have been doing for years. I pull a card every single day and I've recorded it so that way I can look for patterns. It's a great way to see what things are stalking me and whatnot. Uh, so, so I've for years been pulling a daily card and somewhere along the way I got this idea to, I might've gotten it from watching an old video of, uh, Jessica and the moon, who was formerly known as Jessica, the story, Witch. I'll link her channel. Um, yeah, probably did because I, I've repeatedly watched her, her journal videos. Actually, I just realized she was in my dream. I should message her. Um, oh, this card is just stunning. Um, so, so this card, this deck is one I am severely attached to. I am so in love with it. I recently found the Oracle I'm going to be pairing it with, which if you want to know how I'm redoing my purchasing, uh, you can check a video I did of that up above in the cards where I reworked my wish list and I talked about how I'm going to be prioritizing purchasing things to go with the decks I already have um, versus brand new decks. There's more to it. You can check out the video. Anywho, so what I started doing was building off of my daily draw. And here, in fact, is today's daily card. Now, this is the page of cups when put into the when put into the traditional RWS. The mirror card of it is the page of cups. A key word of this card is harmony. And I actually just learned this because of yesterday, which is an example I'm going to show you. So what I do is, where's my little book? There it is. So what I do is I put this away in its bag first, which these stunning bags, if you don't know, are made by Peggy. I will link her Etsy shop in the description and you can go check it out. Um, these wrap bags in particular are my absolute favorite. Um, I pick them for very special decks um, that I want to keep that sacred feeling. And they're my just absolute favorite of the bags, um, the pouch wrap bags. Anywho, so I'll tuck that aside. So the part of the process, first part of the process is that I draw my daily card. So today I drew the page, I drew the composer from the suit of beings. It's mirror card being the page of chalices or cups. I take that card and I find my daily card and I put it in my necklace, which I wear. So this is part of that practice. And then at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I reflect. So what I did yesterday is right here. Um, at the end of the day, I wrote I found some space in my journal, I wrote, and I wrote, the composer is about looking for harmony. And so what I do then is when I sit down to reflect, I, I take out the guidebook and I read the guidebook to see what the card is uh, supposed to be about according to the creator of the deck. And then from there, I, I see what sticks out and I relate it to my day in some way, shape or form. So yesterday, um, what stuck out for the composer was that idea of looking for harmony, which I was shocked I didn't make that connection because it's a composer and I sing in the choir. I know about composers, right? And composers um, or conductors, 
because he's shown here conducting. Um, they're all about finding harmony, harmony and balance within the individualism of the part, right? Like really good conducting and really good composing, in my opinion, you can pick out all the different, all the different voices, all the different instruments, and they are, while they are celebrated as individuals, they are blending and coming together to create a beautiful, unique, harmonized whole. And so I wish I was a bit stuck, surprised with myself after that I hadn't connected those dots. But now, now that I have, I will never forget what this card is about. So, so yesterday I pulled the card and then at the end of the day, uh, when I do my evening journaling practice, so I build it into a practice that I've already have, and that's my journal. Um, I look at the card and I read the guidebook and okay, so looking for harmony is what stuck out. So currently what I'm doing with it is I'm using this to build a bigger reading. Um, so I asked myself what was blocking my harmony today and I pulled the card and I journaled about it. And then I asked myself, how can I be better at it tomorrow? And I pulled a card and I journaled about it. And funny story, this ended up being my daily card again today. So clearly this is an important thing. The main idea is, and you can do this in multiple different ways, is to pick a card at the beginning of the day. And then at the end of the day, you reflect back on the card to see how you, how that card showed up in your life that day. Did it show up as a, I really could have used this energy today. Uh, like the harmony that this was a card yesterday telling me to work on harmony. It's what I needed. I didn't work on it. I had a shitty day. Um, sometimes it's that way, or sometimes it's a card that the energy is just surrounding you. Um, where like, if you pull a three of three of cups, and I spend all day just playing and having just an emotionally wonderful time with my family, I would feel I really lived the Three of Cups. So, but the main point is to pull a card at the beginning of the day, and then at the end of the day, read the guidebook and reflect on it, comparing it to the day you've just experienced. Because there's something very unique about bringing bringing something that is intangible. The energy of these cards is intangible. There's something about relating it to your life. Perhaps I got the idea when I watched Lisa's, um, when I found Lisa's first tarot. Oh, what was it? She called it. Uh, uh, perhaps I got the idea when Lisa did her tarot memoirs. Um, when I saw those, I, I very well might have. But the act of taking something that's slightly intangible, like the energy of these cards and what they're meant to represent, and bringing it into our everyday world understanding really helps me to solidify my knowledge and understanding of the cards. That is the, in, in my understanding, that is the basic way, um, that is the most basic way that humans learn day-to-day -day life experiential learning and living. And it certainly works best for me. I've tried sitting down and studying a deck in more traditional study ways where I will, and studying tarot the same way. I have not read a tarot book. I've read tarot guidebooks. Um, I've been working with the tarot a lot. I, I consume a lot of tarot content on YouTube, listening to others. I don't learn through the traditional, like, sit down and reading kind of manners. At least that's not, that's not the way that is sustainable and realistic for me. So I have to find other ways. And for me, what really hits home is the relating it. So here's what I'm doing currently. And this is actually something I'm doing. Um, I'll tell you since we're here, like I'm doing this as a message from my ancestors for the day. And then in the evening, I'm doing a reading with whatever deck I'm working with to 
further talk to my ancestors and work with them. So I'm starting my day with my ancestors and ending my day with my ancestors. That's a part of my personal practice, but I do have other examples. Let's just put, let's just put that guy right there. Let's, let's, ah, oh, look, isn't he pretty? So this is an old journal, um, from March, 2021 from last year. And I have some examples. This is when I was doing it every single day. Um, and I do this periodically. Periodically I'll decide to, um, periodically I'll just be like, I want to study tarot more. And I'm actually going into that phase now. Um, so here's Saturday. My tarot draw was the fool. And then at the end of the day, I wrote about it. Oh, the fool, the signal of a new journey. I feel like maybe part of this new journey energy right now is exploring and bringing practice to the how can I be of service today. And that was something I was working on. Uh, the Five of Cups. This was a good one. Wishing for what might have been. I think it's time to start with what is. I think when it comes to my health especially, I get stuck in this Five of Cups place. I think it's important for, uh, it's important and time for me to move to thinking about where I am and where I might like to go. And then the next example of this style uh, really, really shows how I learn. So Keeper of Visions, that's from, oh, I don't know what tarot deck. Keeper of Visions. Oh, yes, I do. That's from the Forest of Enchantment Tarot. That's the King of Cups. So here's what I wrote. Let me list the shadow traits I've experienced today. Too emotionally detached, moody. Also, I'm really feeling the, and I put it in quotes here, his kind heart can overflow into grief at the world's cruelty today with just the whole world situation today. So I sat there. I read the guidebook. I read shadow traits of this card and I put it into terms with my day. Now, that's still, it's weird um, what makes it hit home. Sometimes it takes a while for me to really have like a, a tarot epiphany, but I do always eventually have one. Let me see, was... Um, I'm trying to find another example. Sorry, I was trying to look for a specific example, but there was a time, I guess it was earlier this year, where this process really um, opened my understanding of the Emperor. I would always kind of forget that the Emperor had a layer of control to it. And so, until earlier this year, I thought it was last year, man, it, it baffles my brain what all stuff has happened this year. Um, until this year, I got the emperor. And at the time, I did my reflections and I said, I don't know. Um, but then, after I tried to do my journaling reflections, I had a big blow up with someone um, that was centered on control issues. Um, the point is, there's various different ways that you can, um, here's, here's one where I wrote, I would write in the top corner, I would write using my color code what my card was, um, and I would, at the end of the day, journal, um, about it. Here's one where I had the hermit as my card. And I wrote, I was really just wanting to do my own thing today. Um, uh, it's... It's just the act of pulling a card and then instead of sitting down and doing like reading about it in books and stuff, which I, I might still be doing, I'm looking to further and, and just go deeper and deeper in my study. My favorite way to do it is to 
is to do it like tarot memoir style, I guess you could put it, where I pull my daily card and then at the end of the day, I read the guidebook and I reflect on my day and I see what connects. And and then often I'll I'll talk to people about it. And that is the that is the main way I studied tarot um besides just doing readings for myself and for people, but a dedicated study practice. This is the number one way I have my favorite way that I keep coming back to time and time again. Daily card pull in the morning, evening reflection where I relate it to my day I have just experienced. So that way I can learn and find those memorable things to help me grow and expand in my knowledge of the cards. And that's it. Like I said, just a short video today. I hope uh, I worded myself well and I hope you uh, got something useful out of this video. Uh, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up to let me know if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell notification. And in the comments down below, uh, let's talk about what our favorite ways to study tarot are. Do you use a lot of tarot books? Do you just pull cards and read about them? What is it that you like to do to study tarot? I would love to talk about it with you all in the comments. Oh, and uh, please don't forget to check out the description box where you can see my website. I offer services. I do readings. I'm an astrologer. Yada, yada. It's all there. You can get that info. And I'll let you go here. And I will see you again very, very soon. Lots of love. Bye.